one of the topics that uh, people brought up when we were talking about what do we want to talk about uh, for recording our podcasts was mental health days and schools. And this idea um, that was proposed of having schools um, offer mental health days, just like maybe you're working and, and we get PTO and it doesn't matter whether we use PTO for sick time or vacations or whatever, we just have a bulk amount of PTO and we use it as we need to. So maybe we're sick, maybe we wanna take vacation days or maybe we just have a day when we just need to be off. Mm -hmm. so I, I mean, I for me, I think it makes sense to kind of treat our kids, especially as they get into older middle school and high school, preparing them for real life, you know, for work and kind of easing them into you have X number of days you can take off. So what do you guys think? I think that our generation is trying to teach the next generation what mental health is. Like we've all, it, the adults in us, all of the adults are really starting to understand the importance in using the terminology mental health, using that um, going to take a mental health day. And I think it's really important to start giving our kids that language to use and understand what it is. And I, I 100% agree with them. I think that if the school isn't giving them to you as a parent, you should be able to take the initiative and say, yeah, that's what we're doing, you know, and not wait until possibly your family's in crisis or dealing with something really bad. Make it a normal part of your school year. I agree with that. I feel like we all need mental health days. Actually, I ended up taking Wednesday off. I like typically don't ever take any time off, but I was just like so overwhelmed with life that day. I had a headache and I was like, oh, I'm just going to not go to work today. And my kids loved it because I mean, I did stuff around here and I, but I napped and I like just hung out with them and they were like, this is the best. Like you should do this more often. <laughs> so I'm all about it. If the kids need a day, they can take a day. If they don't want to go to cheer, if they don't want to go to football or whatever it is, every once in a while, they can do it. My boys skipped football last night because they were just tired. And so we hung out. We went to Eaton Park and came home and laid around. And they needed that, I think. We all need that. Well, as your boss, I would like to encourage you to take more time off. You have PTO. You should use it. Um, my, my goal for us as a team this year is that no one has unused PTO December 31st. I know that, you know, we can roll over a small portion of our PTO, like 30% of our PTO into a catastrophic illness fund. And if you guys are trying to build that up, that's a whole different thing. But I think that you know, as leaders in an organization, we should make sure that our staff's taken care of and make sure that they're encouraged to take time off when they need it. Um, <clears throat> so good for you for take a Wednesday off. And yeah, sometimes we need it. So I think as a parent, if we model that for our kiddos, that's great. But on the other hand, <laughs> I have to say, as a single mom who raised three kids, um, and for a significant portion of, uh, my kiddos younger years, I worked in retail and, um, I didn't really have, you know, with three kids, if I, if I gave them like three mental health days, that's nine days. I've got to figure out what to do with my kids while I go to work on top of their typical sick days that, you know, they, that we all have. So I think on one hand, it's great to say, give your kids time off to take, you know, let them take mental health days. But on the other hand, we, I think as a society have to think about how we support parents so that they can support their children and their children's mental health. And you know, thinking about where I worked in retail, maybe I had like, you know, after I was there for a million years, maybe I had like three weeks vacation time. So that would have, you know, would have sucked up two weeks of my vacation time right there. So um, 
I don't know. Do you guys have any any thoughts on like how that works in practical use for most of our families? I mean, we're kind of lucky we work from home. I love working from home. Absolutely. And I think that it is not, it's the exception and not the rule. And out of all of the families that we talk with and, you know, we're able to support one-on-one, -on -one, I've had one family in all this time that said her employer was supportive. If she needs off, she can be off. That That is the exception. And the situation we have, I mean, I absolutely love my job. I love what we do. I love that my family comes first, that my mental health comes first or those of my loved ones, and that it's always an option to take care of your family and take care of yourself like it's expected. And to have an employer that does that, that makes me love my job 10 times more. And I know a lot of people are not in that situation. So I don't know whenever you first get hired somewhere, you know, they ask you, do you have vacations plan? You know, are there things that we should know about? And if you were able to use that opportunity and say, okay, I have three kids, they're going to possibly have three mental health days. So that's nine days. Can you work with me with that? Without telling that parent, oh, you can be off just without pay, you know, because it shouldn't come at the cost of your groceries and your bills and your livelihood. But I was going to see, can I share a poll with you that was taken in 2022? Yeah, I'd love to hear it. The Very Well Mind and Magazine Parents did a poll and they found out that 75% of parents feel that schools should offer mental health days to students and 56% of parents said that they were already giving their kids mental health days. That's great to hear. Yeah. So I think it is something that even if the school isn't offering, the parents are doing it. And like you said, what can we do to support that parent that is trying to give those days to those kids? Whether it be you're a neighbor or you're an employer or you're a friend that's like, hey, let me know and I'll work around my schedule. And, you know, when it's my turn, maybe you work around your schedule for my kids. I don't know what that looks like, but I think that it's definitely possible. It's doable. And we have proven in our organization, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. I agree with that big time. I uh I don't know what it looks like because I know my husband even is very stuck in what he's allowed to take off, when he's allowed to take off, things like yeah. that. Like half the time he doesn't get the weekends even off. He gets drafted to work the weekends. So that for somebody like that, that's got to be really tough. If you're trying to like raise your kids with a job like that, how do you do the mental health days for yourself or for your kids? Yeah. I mean, I would say to employers who are saying nobody wants to work. It it doesn't cost you anything to give people time to take care of themselves, to give people vacation time. You know, that that doesn't add too, too much to your burden. I mean, I understand if you're a small employer and, you know, maybe you need those those people who are customer facing. Maybe you have to have more people to cover for them, but you're going to have better um employee job satisfaction. You're going to have people who are more likely to want to work for you. And when people feel valued at their workplace, they're more likely to stay. So if you're kind of toying between, gee, how do I keep up because I can't afford these, like, you know, the, I, I can't pay $20 an hour like Target does. Maybe you can offer a little bit of flexibility, or maybe you can offer maybe like a couple scheduled days off in advance or, you know, work with people without them having to disclose on hire that they have a, they have children, they have children with disabilities. They themselves have, you know, some kind of disability that may, uh, you know, require special accommodations. And then we don't know for sure that you would hire us. But, um, you know, kind of think, think about ways that you could support your employees if, if they are 
better rested, they're probably going to do better customer service because when somebody's yelling at them, <laughs> they may be able to, they're, they may not be on a hair, you know, a hairpin trigger themselves, not terribly overstressed. So maybe they'd be able to kind of take a breath and just be like, okay, like, whatever you go, your you go do you and, and it'll be fine. So I would say that to employers. Um, but I wonder, I wonder, um, how would you, do you have any suggestions for people on how to broach this topic with your children? Maybe, um, your middle school children, your older children on like talking to them about mental health days, what they are, how they could be used and maybe give them much like we're at work, like a, a maximum. So like you can't have a mental health day once a week, but how can you kind of set parameters so your children can choose when to use those? Do you guys have any ideas for that? My oldest is 11. She's getting ready to go into middle school and I've, we've always just been pretty in tune with each other. She kind of just, I can tell when she's feeling some type of way. So I'll be like, hey, are you okay? Like, do you need to, you know, skip this? Or do you want to take a nap or what's going on? And she usually, she doesn't tell me a lot, but I can usually read her pretty well. And if I say like, hey, do you want to, you know, skip this or do this or whatever, she'll skip and she'll take the nap or whatever it is. But she's not real forthcoming, so. I would hope that maybe as she gets older, she'll tell me a little more about what's, what she's feeling and how she's feeling. I mean, I do like, though, that you are um, almost kind of, because you can sense it, you can have a conversation with her. And that, that gives you a really great opportunity to kind of teach. Like, hey, it seems to me like you're, you got some kind of feelings going on might today be a good day for you to take a mental health day and kind of hang out at home. So I, I do think that, that for our kids, we need to teach them maybe to be in tune with their bodies or at least help them make that connection of maybe it's a little bit too much today. So maybe today's a good at home PJ day. I don't know. What do you think, Melissa? Well, I think even explaining to them what a mental health day is, it doesn't mean we're going to sit at home and you're going to tell me exactly how you're feeling and answer all my questions because I'm terribly concerned about you because <laughs> they would be like not up for that at all. They're like, I'd rather go to school. <laughs> so like letting them know what that looks like and following up like the next day or two, how did that make you feel? Are you glad you did that? Was that a good thing? You know, did you benefit from it? Um, I think that it is one very important to model but we have to model out loud sometimes you know we can't just do it we we have to say you know i let my employer know today i was going to be off and i'm going to do some things i have to do that i have to get done because you know you guys need to eat and have clean clothes but i'm also i'm going to relax i'm going to not answer the phone for this or that you know i'm going to take a nap and read a book or whatever that might be but um I think having the conversation so they understand what it is instead of it maybe sounding clinical, like, oh, I'm going to get to the root of all the problems right now. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I think especially for us as parents, modeling, you know, we could do that on a, even on like a Saturday or Sunday when we, when we kind of feel ourselves um, getting to that to that point where Chrissy, your headache was probably telling you something, you know, your body was probably saying, take a break. Oh yeah. I was really like just spread thin and I just caught up, you know, I was like, I can't do it. You know, I just can't today because you're trying to help other people at our job. And I was yeah. like, I myself am so tired. I don't think I can do it today. And then I came back yesterday and I talked to literally everyone and did a million things. And I just needed that break. And really, I didn't even do much. I like cleaned up my kitchen and hung out with the kids. And But I had to. Like there was just no way around it. I just had to. And so they probably get to that point too because they're human. And they're dealing with stuff too. They're figuring out the world around them. And that transition, I think, between like elementary and middle school is tough on my 11 year old. She's really worried about kids making fun of her clothes and she has to get rid of anything with like a Disney character on it or 
you know, anything like that. And so I think she's going through it too. So I'm open for her to take some time whenever she needs to, especially in the beginning of the school year. And I usually, well, in years past was kind of stringent about them going to school because she struggles with mm -hmm. school. And I feel like every time she missed, she would get behind. But sometimes like your mental well-being is worth just working a little harder at home for a week on school stuff so that you're not stressed because she's, I'm high anxiety as a person, just like high strung. And I think she is that way too. I think, I think that that, um, I think that's a really good idea just for our children, um, for people who are listening. If you're, if you're not necessarily worried about your child having, um, like a formal mental health diagnosis, but you just want to set a good tone of mental wellness in your life, your family's life, your children's life. I think that, that this is good so that your children are in touch with their own bodies and how they're feeling, you know, we're, we're all, uh, women here. So you know how sometimes a couple days before you get your period, you're feeling like one more person looks at me and it might not be safe for them, but you, maybe you don't realize, you know, uh, two days later, you're like, oh yeah. Oh, that's why, um, uh, really good for our mental wellness for everyone. Um, but definitely, I think with our children who do have a mental health diagnosis, um, we may not be able to get to school, although, you know, you can put anything in your IEP that your child needs. Um, but so maybe you can't get your school to agree to uh, mental health days. And but maybe you could have knowing that your personal philosophy at home is going to be, I'm going to allow my child to take a couple of mental health days here or there when they need it, need it, you know, like maybe over the nine months they're in school, they could take three days, they could take four days, whatever the case may be. And in their IEP builds in a plan to help them catch up for missed days. So that much like us, when you, we take a vacation, we probably feel like we do like, oh, I took a, I'm taking vacation next week. I've got to contact all my families this week and then, you know, double book myself when I get back. Not a great thing. So, you know, think about how we could in their IEP help them catch up so that they're not paying a steep price for, and they don't fall behind for taking those days off. And I think in our IEP bootcamp, um, we do have one, one day, it's like 21 days of tips. And actually, I think we have two days where we talk about accommodations and we have like different lists, depending upon what your diagnosis is, that kind of gives you um, things that you could put into your child's IEP, but definitely putting in ways that they could catch up from missed days, especially if they have anxiety, if they have something like ADHD, where maybe they're waiting to the last minute anyway. The um, blog that Peyton put out, um, our most recent one about anxiety linked to physical, um, I think even she it was beautiful it was very informative and the correlation is just spot on starting to teach your kids that because they may not they may not understand to put it into words that they're overwhelmed that they need a mental health day so start teaching them that that anxiety of holding your shoulders up and being like that you could wake up the next day and your shoulders are sore and you don't know why your shoulders are sore because you don't even recognize that for hours you were just tense um the headaches you know things like that start educating them so they can see mm -hmm. when they're escalating when it's a little more when they're more nauseated or they're using the bathroom more not sleeping well um, i think that you know, knowledge is power and educating them on these things, even the littles, because there is, there's so much education for every age group. You know, I think it's important to educate them so they understand why they may need a mental health day and what the benefits will be from that. And that it's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. And if you start doing them when they're needed instead of a have to, 
a want to, that could change a lot for them. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. And as you're talking, I'm thinking that maybe that's something good to um, to add to our emotional safety plan is to um, help your child maybe come up with a checklist for us to guide parents through ways of talking to their children about thinking about how are you feeling that stress in your body? So like you said, do you feel more tense? Like if I remind you to take a deep breath and relax your shoulders at that point, are you like, oh yeah, my shoulders were, like you said, my shoulders were tight. Um, and then kind of add even to that, that uh, emotional safety plan, take, take it some time. And maybe we don't even necessarily have to make it an all or nothing. They take the whole day off. Maybe it's, they can go to school a little bit later. Maybe they could take a half day. Um, so I think kind of being a little creative about that. Um, and then getting back to thinking about like my own personal situation when my, you know, a, as a single parent, maybe once my kiddos got to be in high school, maybe one of the things that I could say to them is, you know, you're, you're old enough to stay at home alone. Um, if I have to go into work, so you just have to let me know when you need a mental health day. And that may be a great opportunity to, we don't talk a lot, maybe as much as we should about natural supports. And Melissa, you had mentioned like, do we have a neighbor who can keep an eye out for our kiddo? Do we have a, a grandparent who can, even if they're not close, can they do a FaceTime call with the kids? If, if we're in a situation where, you know, Chrissy, if you're in court with a family, right, you, you can't call in to check on your kiddo to see, did they get lunch? Did they whatever? But if you could ask a grandparent or an aunt or, you know, someone in your family circle or a good friend, hey, do you mind, you know, giving them a call and doing a FaceTime kind of thing just to make sure that maybe they're not up to any chaos and maybe they have support if they want to talk to somebody. Um, I think in certain situations, yeah, we could kind of think about how we could get that, use a virtual uh, natural support person. Yeah, that's a great, great idea. Um, we, I'm very lucky in that regard as far as like mom friends and things like that go. I have a lot of people in my little village out here that we all kind of look out for each other's families and things like that. So that's a great idea too. Even, yeah, virtually is great. Like. My sister lives on Mount Washington, so close to, to you, but she can, you know, she's always talking to the girls. Actually, one of them was on the phone with her right now. So I could always use her to, you know, check in on them if I had to. Melissa, do you have anything to add? Um, I was just thinking, like, in even in a perfect world, if the schools would be a hundred percent on board there was actually a place at the school they could still go to school but not be in school um, in like a little cubby or something where they could lay down they could take a nap they can still get their lunch and whatnot um and i know that's not going to happen but like the <laughs> idea of that is very appealing to me i you know, agree it'd be amazing yeah that the school models it and teaches our children that that is a good thing and that's necessary because like when they're sick they get sent to the nurse's office when they're struggling you know there's not i mean there are places you know you can go and talk to the guidance counselors social workers um, psychologists things like that but like if you just need a mental break you know that's and probably a lot of our kids are going to the nurse's office. You know, I know mine did. I know I did, you know, when I was in school and be like, not sick, but like my nerves were shot or my stomach was upset, you know, and I may not even realize that it was mental health related, but I was hanging out in the nurse's office that day, you know, I was going to lay down and take a nap and no, I didn't but, need my mom to pick me up, but I was just, that's where I was. <laughs> needed a break. I do have good news. I will put in our um, show notes that there are actually um, a, quite a few schools in um, northern, northeastern Pennsylvania that are putting in like relaxation rooms in their school building 
where I'm not exactly sure how they how they kind of put parameters about who can use them when they're used. Um, people will be able to read that in the show notes, but they are deliberately creating these rooms in their school where kids can go and take a break. I love that. I love that. There's a little school district here in Washington County, actually, that does have that as an option. And it's awesome. And they've become my favorite school <laughs> district down here. That's not where my kids go, but they're doing so much with, with so little. They took their COVID money and really used it for mental health. They have like a big mental health initiative in the elementary school and the middle school, which typically they do that like in high school settings, but not typically in the little the little grades. And it's amazing. They have um, like a relaxation room. They have an extra social worker that they hired that the kids can just go see if they want to. That's separate from like guidance and the regular school social worker. And they're there. I mean, they graduate like 60 kids in a class. So they're not a very big district, but they're doing like amazing things as far as that stuff goes. Well, call them out. Who are they? Do you know their name off the top of your head? Fort Cherry. Yeah. Fort Cherry School District. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, Actually, kiddos that I've worked with in other buildings have ended up getting transferred into that district because they willingly take kids with open arms and they have, you know, emotional support in the elementary school. They have um, that the extra social worker. They have that relaxation room. They have a sensory space. Uh, They do tons of things with like art therapy. It's just, and it's in a very rural area. It's not like a well-to-do area, anything like that. It's just, they real the superintendent must really think that it's important and has really made strides to make it awesome. And so they're wonderful and really ahead of the times. That leadership comes from the top. You know, if they're, if they're committed to that, they'll create that environment. My oldest graduated in a class of 60. So, you know, I think that sometimes rural communities think like we can't have the things that big, big school districts have. Perfect example of uh, how a school can be innovative if they have that determination and that leadership. So kudos to them. Yeah, it's incredible. I was, we went to tour it with another, one of the kiddos that I was working with that was going to go there. I got to go tour and see and meet and just see what kind of resources there were. And there's, I mean, it's incredible what they're doing with not a lot. Wow. So if any realtors are listening, that's the, and you're working in the area, make sure that you work that into your sales pitch for, uh, for housing. Because we get calls all the time, you know, f- families who are really frustrated and they're like, what school district can I move my kids to? And we're like, oh, like, we know the ones that don't work. <laughs> so it's good well, to know, a- know a good one. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I would love for my kids to be able to go there, but that's not where we live. So <laughs> we'll all move. We're all moving. And Fort Cherry <laughs> sounds like a nice place. Like, doesn't that kind of sound like... Yeah, that's kind of like a cute sounding, I'm picturing, you know, a little Hallmark village. I don't, I've never been there, but in my head, the name makes me think of like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it's farmy. It's it's a very farmy area, but it, I mean, they're doing very, the school district's wonderful. Love hearing that. Love hearing that. Well, ladies, as we wrap up. I know it's Friday morning here for us, so hopefully, uh, well, I don't know about anybody else, but I know I am counting down the moments to be done with work. It's what, probably the hottest day so far this year we've had in Pittsburgh. Um, So, and I don't know, probably out with you too, Chrissy, taking the kids to the pool this afternoon. (laughs) Uh, Well, I am, I'm down to two because two just left with their grandma to go to the trampoline park. And so I have the older two, but I... Yeah, maybe. Maybe when I'm done working, I'll take him to the pool. I was going to clean, but it's hot and our central air is not working. So maybe I will just go do something fun with them instead. Because, the, you know, the dirty house will still be there tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to break into your house and clean it for you. I mean, if no. they do, wouldn't that be great? Like, I wouldn't be complaining. Oh, I welcome it, please. If anyone wants to come pick up a broom, go for it. <laughs> right. Right. Melissa, any fun plans for the weekend? Yeah, we had planned when we seen how hot it was going to be that we were not going to be cooking and we're all getting together and having pizza and swimming. So that's our I love that. to-do list today. <laughs> I love that. What kind is pizza? Uh, I may, Fort I may Fox. invite myself. All right. Excellent. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> so it works welcome. with timing. Get in the 
of the city. I, I could totally do that. <laughs> All right, ladies, thanks so much for your time today. Have a fantastic day and a lovely weekend. And thanks to everybody who listened. If you have great ideas about um, how to manage, if you're managing mental health days for your kiddos and you have tips you'd like to share with everybody, we'd love to hear them. You can reach out to us at contact at PA Parent and Family Alliance.org or uh, put your comments in whatever your platform is chat and we'll kind of poke around and look for those. Um, but thanks everybody and have a great weekend. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye ladies. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>